Hey guys, I uh, came across something on Facebook the other day, uh, maybe not even yesterday, um, for asking, just just asking what we thought about the day-age theory. Uh, and someone piped in with progressive creationism. <clears throat> now, you know, immediately I got th thinking about doing this just to, to clear some things up. Um, what I'm going to do, we're going to kind of go over what the gap theory is. Uh, the gap theory says that there's a there's a uh, a gap of millions or billions of years between Genesis 1:1 and Genesis 1:2, and there's lots of evidence for that as far as they're concerned. Uh, the day age theory says that this the six days of creation were not literal 24 hour days; they were long spans or periods of time. Their proof of verses of, for that is um, in Psalm chapter 90, it says, One day with the Lord is as a thousand, thousand years, a thousand years is a day. Second Peter is a quote of that same verse. Um, so those two verses, I really, they're only one verse, but it's uh, <clears throat> um, that's their proof verse for that. Um, some simple things that I just want to point out. Uh, number one, we know that everything was created in six days. That's what the Bible says. The first day, the second day. It was all created in six days. And we, we, we know they're all six lumped together because of Exodus 20:11 and uh, 31, 17. Now, we also know that Satan was created. He hasn't always been. He was created, uh, according to Ezekiel 28, verses 13 and 14. Um, because of those verses, Ezekiel 28, we know that uh, Satan was in Eden as a nice guy until he sinned. Now we also know that Eden wasn't made. Uh, it, um, it wasn't made till day number six. Uh, Eden, he wasn't. The garden wasn't. Uh, and that's uh, Genesis two verse eight. You can find that out. Um, <clears throat> Satan and all the angels shouted for joy when God laid the foundations of the earth, according to Job thirty-eight verses one through four. Now that's interesting because when were the foundations laid? Well, the closest I can get to it, reading through Genesis, the first chapter, is that they were laid on day number three, uh, according to Genesis 1, verse 9. Now, we know that everything that was made was very good at the end of day number six, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. Um, Jesus said that the creation of Adam was the beginning, uh, according to well, that's Matthew 19, 4, Mark 10, 6 is parallel verse. Um, we know that nothing died until Adam's sin and brought death into the world. Okay, that's uh, Genesis. You can find Genesis three six, uh, Romans five eight, First Corinthians fifteen twenty one. Uh, Genesis one five tells us that it was the first day. Now the T H E that is in the English language that is the definite article. That means there's only one. There's only one first day. How you know some other Bible perversions <clears throat> down here. I've changed it to say a first day. Well, how many a first days can you have? I mean, every day is a first day, you know. But there was only one the first day, and it was when God created time, space, and matter, Genesis 1-1. Uh, Genesis 2-2 and scores of other verses, Genesis 20-11 and uh, Matthew 4-4, talk about the seventh day. Now, it can't be the seventh day if each one of those days is either a period of millions of thousands, billions of years, for as far as the day age uh, theory is, is concerned. Um, I mean, it can't be the seventh day. And if you had a whole bucket load of days before uh, in that span between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2, it sure in the heck wouldn't be the seventh day. I mean, you've, you've got a serious problem. If there's a gap between the two verses, Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2, then you've got, there's a serious problem. Obviously, those all those other verses are wrong. And the Bible doesn't work that way. Hermeneutics, Bible study doesn't work that way. So, I mean, these are just some common sense points. So, for, in order for someone to say, well, the, the Bible teach, which, you know, I've got all these study Bibles up here. And I'm, to be honest, most of them, uh, Alexander's, or not Scorby, uh, uh, Schofield. Schofield teaches the gap theory. And uh, Dake teaches the gap theory. And Ryrie te teaches, and uh, the Companion Bible, who wrote, uh, Bollinger. Bollinger teaches the gap theory. I mean, those guys are wrong. They're really smart guys. But I'm sorry, they're wrong. You just can't have it. Plus the days, the the plants were made on day number three. The sun was made on day number four. So how long are those plants going to live without the sun? Uh, pl plus the insects that pollinate the plants were day made on day number five. It, you know, you, you they have to be literal 24-hour days. Now, you, they obviously the the spin of the Earth is slowing down. They, we don't even have a 24-hour day today. It's 23 hours, 56 minutes, 48 seconds. 
But my point is that there were it was it was one day, one spin of the the sun, uh, one revolution of the or the, the spin of the sun, one spin of the earth, um, and and that 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 constitutes a day. Um, so I, and I just keep in mind, I'm just repeating what somebody else has already said. I mean, this isn't like some new stuff, and I'm not, I'm not real smart here, okay? But uh, it makes it, it's common sense. It doesn't it, it doesn't take a whole lot of thought process in order to come to this conclusion, guys. Uh, just read the Bible and believe it like it says. Uh, you can't you can't come out and say, well, you know, the Bible says this, and, and unless you you got some twisting, you got a private interpretation of Scripture, guys. And the Bible and God condemns that. So. I uh, love you. I hope I gave you some stuff to think about. Maybe I'm wrong, but we're not going to know until we get to heaven. So love you. Bye.